So the first approach to, to spatial exploratory data analysis that I want to talk about is, is smoothing and detrending. Uh, and, and the objectives of smoothing and detrending are exactly analogous to what we talked about in time series analysis. Um, most spatial statistical methods uh, assume stationarity. They assume that uh, the, la the larger trends in the data have been removed, and we're looking at, you know, the autocorrelation in the the, the near uh, the residual from that. Um, the, you know, the the idea of uh, you know constant mean and and um, second order stationarity, you know, the the variance is just a function of distance. Uh, are built into a lot of uh, the vast majority of, of spatial statistical methods. Um, so the concepts are ex exactly analogous uh, to what we saw in, in time series analysis. Uh, they're just having to deal with things in a uh, slightly more complicated way uh, because now we're dealing with uh, two-dimensional data or in sometimes three-dimensional data. Um, and so, you, so the idea of you know, you can still do things like running a, a moving average through data, but you're going to have to do it <clears throat> in space across two dimensions uh, instead of three. And the other thing that often is more complicated in uh, space is that there's a, a greater tendency for our spatial data to be sparse and irregular than there is with our time series data. You know, time series data, you know, typically, uh, has a, a fairly deep, you know, very often time series data has a default measurement frequency. Uh, sometimes there's missing data. But with spatial data, it's often, it's very rare to find a spatial data set that is, is truly sampled, you know, along a grid. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's often sampled, right, you know, fairly randomly in space. Uh, and so you can't count on, so one of the challenges with smoothing then is that you can't count on a certain number of points showing up consistently. <clears throat> so because of that, you know, things like uh, polynomial smoothing, which is something we did use uh, uh, for, for time series analysis and then generalized to things like locally weighted polynomials uh, are things that you can do in, in Spatial statistics is one of the more common approaches to detrending. And so, uh, you know, for example, in R, we can do this with the spatial library, the same one we used to do Ripley's K, uh, where we can fit. You know, basically, I'm going to go over three steps here. First, fitting the surface uh, to a polynomial. So we can use this surf LS. I believe the LS stands for least squares. Uh, polynomial of some degree. Again, the degree is number of, uh, essentially number of uh, exponents in it. So, uh, uh, you know, a zeroth degree polynomial is a mean, a first degree is linear, a second degree is quadratic, third degree is cubic. Um, and in this case, we're passing in x, y, z data. So the x and the y being your locations and the z being your attribute. So this surface is really uh, optimized for two-dimensional surface so, you know, actually most of the geospatial techniques we're going to talk about are, are primarily focused on two-dimensional data, but many can be extended to three dimensions. Uh, so we're going to fit that surface. Uh, this uh, TR mat is uh, giving us our trend as a matrix. Uh, so we take this, the object that comes out of this function, our surface object, we give it a bounding box and uh, you know, grid resolution, and it will then project, you know, kind of create a, a gridded prediction uh, from this polynomial. And then I'm just using the image function just to make an image of that uh, matrix. So here is that same uh, geospatial data set that we had before. Here, fitting a, a zeroth degree polynomial, so just fitting the constant mean to it. Uh, here, fitting uh, a first degree uh, polynomial, so just a linear trend. You can see that really doesn't actually do a good job of capturing uh, the trends in the data. It does note something we didn't didn't jump out at me at least visually was it a trend from the bottom 
uh, right corner to the upper left corner of, of increasing magnitude. Uh, and then we see a, a second degree polynomial, uh, so a, quadra a spatial quadratic. Uh, actually, you know, just visually you can see it's actually capturing the trends in this data fairly well. So it captures, you know, because it's second degree and with interaction terms, it's capturing uh, kind of the covariance structure in, in this data um, and the, the general spatial pattern. And so that, so in a, in, you know, kind of for further uh, spatial analyses, you would do something like use the second degree polynomial, figure out this trend surface, subtract off that trend surface, and then you could look at the residuals and see is there any remaining uh, spatial autocorrelation in the residuals after you've accounted for the trends. Okay.